Hi everyone and welcome to this video. This video is going to be about a little IC called the ACS712 and I've done a video about this in the past but um, it was about a year ago when I first started YouTube and um, you know now I have better knowledge, better equipment, um, better software, better lighting, camera etc and uh, I've got more knowledge on how to um, relay the info better so I thought I'd redo the video. To start with then, what actually is this, this uh, module? Well, um, it's called a Hall Effect Sensor and it's made by a company called Allegro and um, yeah, the Hall Effect Sensor it's basically a current sensor. Um, it's called Hall Effect because the guy who, um, who discovered the means of measuring um, current in this way was called Edwin Hall and um, he discovered this in the 1800s, the late 1800s and um, the Hall effect is um, when an amount of current passes through somewhere um, it gives off um, a degree of magnetism um, and that degree of magnetism is um, linear with the amount of uh, current that passes through a conductor um, and this chip basically um, uses that, uh, that effect in order to measure So what actually happens here is um, when current passes through these two plates here underneath the current goes through the two pins and then it comes back out here through these two pins and then back out this plate and um, through the screw terminal uh, adapter. But this little chip here measures the Hall effect and then when it's measured the Hall effect there's some bits of processing and then it gets sent out here so I'll discuss that in a second. Um, and this particular one, it's called ACS 71230A and it's called 30A because this is capable of measuring up to 30 amps of current. You don't have to measure 30 amps but uh, it's capable of that. So now moving on, what happens after it's measured it? Well what happens is that it outputs the signal um, by analogue, it's not digital, this is an analogue device and um, yeah it's to be read in an analog pin in the Arduino so you power this with 5 volts and you connect it to ground and the output pin goes to an analog input pin on the Arduino and um, that's pretty much all there is to it so in this video um, I'm going to show you how to wire this thing up how to code it and I'm also going to test it and um, you'll be able to see the testing and you'll be able to see for yourself that it works um, so let's get started so um, there's another thing I need to mention as well actually this thing can go up to 30 amps um, it can measure up to 30 amps but I'm not going to measure up to 30 amps what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure up to 5 amps and the reason for that is because um, firstly it's quite difficult to be able to uh, get a power source that will allow you to accurately uh, measure or give off um, 30 amps of current um, and the second reason is that we don't need to um, I've got my power supply and that can um, control up to 5 amps of current and that will be definitely sufficient for this little project anyway so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a nano so this is an Arduino Nano. You don't have to use a Nano. You can use any any um, any Arduino. But um, this is, you know, becoming one of my favourites now. So I'm going to use that. I've got some female wires here as well. Again, you can use any wires. If you want to adapt the thing to use a breadboard, you can do. But this is just what I'm doing. So let's connect this up. Usually I'd use colour coded uh, wires, but I'm not today. Um, so I've connected the three up there so VCC is blue so I need to connect that to 5 volts on the uh, nano so connect that to 5 volts there we go the next one is um, out which is green so green needs to be connected to A0 ideally A0 and that's done and the next one needs to be connected to ground which so it's yellow ground 
yellow ground, where's ground, there it is ground now I'll just zoom out so you can see all of this so it's connected up now and that's all there is to it for connecting it up what I need to do now is provide it with some um, current so these two uh, screw terminals here just zoom in again those two screw terminals that's what the um, the current source if you like has got to go through and the way you wire this up is you have um, you know from the plus through here down to negative or it's the reverse so you have the power coming in this way and out here right now I need to go and set up my power supply unit right now I need to um, wire the actual leads to this thing now usually you'd screw them in there you'd screw in wires but um, I'm not going to do that I'm just going to do it a bit of a cheap way and um, I'm going to clip these over like this now this thing actually has a polarity and I don't know what that polarity is at the minute but we'll soon find out so I'll just connect this up like that okay now let's zoom out again and now I'll show you the power supply unit okay there's my power supply unit so I can control the amperage just like this and I can go all the way up to 5 amps and that's what I'm going to be using to test this thing out okay before we get started I thought it would be good to look at the data sheet for this module so let's just see if there's anything interesting we can find out about this module uh, low noise and analog signal path that's of course always a good thing uh, anything else? Error of 1.5% at 25 degrees Celsius. That's, that's remarkable, really. Um, 5 volt single supply, we know that. 66 to 185 millivolts per amp output sensitivity. Um, the reason why it's showing a range there is because there are different types of ACS712. There's different models, if you like, submodels. Um, but more on that in a minute. Output voltage proportional to AC or DC currents. So uh, what that's saying is that the output of the module uh, works the same for AC or DC. And what that means is that you can use this module for AC or DC. Uh, it works for both. So that's good to know. Um, although the way you program it is slightly different, but it does actually work with both. Uh, what else to say? Uh, zero magnetic hysteresis, uh, stable, right, factory trimmed, no problem, right, so that's fine there. Let's have a look down here, see if there's anything else that's interesting. There's the pinout, but we won't need the pinout because ours is already broken out onto a board. Um, characteristics, I'm not particularly bothered about any of that. Ah, this is interesting. So, um, there are different sub-models, like I just said a minute ago. So you've got the 5 amp version, the 20 amp version, and the 30 amp version. And I've got the 30 amp version. So this data here is relevant to, to my one. So the sensitivity is 66 millivolts per amp. So if I was to pull one amp of current through this um, chip, then the output of the chip to the Arduino would be 66 millivolts. Or if I was to pull 2 amps through, um, the output would be about 132 or 130 or whatever um, millivolts. And um, yeah, th that's quite an important number. I'll need to uh, remember that for, for, for later on. Anything else interesting down here? Um, I'm not particularly interested in any of that. Output voltage versus sampled current. So I think that's just saying the margin of error there. Uh, and it seems to suggest that it's uh, mainly based on the temperature. But as long as you keep it 25 degrees Celsius or under, we get um, a pretty good rate of accuracy. So that's good. I'm not particularly interested about any of that. I'm not bothered about any of that either. These are just samples, um, circuit, you know, sample circuit diagrams and stuff like that. Okay, so that's good enough for now. So now it's time to start writing the code. 